Hey, what's up? I'm your host, Bob Thompson, and welcome to Unleashing Greatness, the number one show for people who are ready to finally start or scale their own business and do it successfully. Over the last nine years, I've scaled my little basement business to 15 plus locations and several other businesses, but it hasn't been without trial and error and lots of diversity. I'm here to share with you the strategies and tools that actually work when running a business and how not to lose yourself while doing it. So if you're ready to unleash the greatness within you, let's dive into today's show. Today I want to talk about how you can get more done with less time. So how to increase productivity if you don't want to spend a ton of time doing it or you don't have a ton of time doing it. So for some context, as I was thinking about today's podcast and I was taking a shower, my puppy started scratching on the door and like the frame or whatever for the shower. This is pretty common. She does this all the time. And then this just made me think how great it is to be an entrepreneur, how great it is to be in business for yourself. And especially in the beginning, it can be really scary, but then eventually you can get to this point where let's say you have this puppy and then you're given an option. Hey, what do I do with this puppy all day while I work? You know, one of the options could be bring it to work with me. You know, depending on the season you're in in your business, you get to bring that puppy and you can hang out with your dog all day. And I was actually thinking about this and I forgot, but one of my motivating factors of why I started Legion back in 2012, why I actually took the plunge to open up my own gym was I wanted to hang out with my dog all day. Back then I had this puppy, Ruby, had it for a couple of years. I got her in college. I think like my last year or so of college, best dog ever. Like, you know, you always hear those stories about dogs where like you have that one dog in a lifetime and she was definitely that dog for me. And uh, a couple years into the gyms, actually, and at the time I was still training like athletes and a high school athlete wanted to do her uh, art project on by creating a mural in the gym. So she actually painted Ruby on the wall. So it was a 12,000 or 1200 square foot building so, or unit. So about a thousand square feet. So what was it? 50 feet on the wall. So like 50 feet or no, I guess it was maybe like 35 or whatever feet of that wall was this mural of Ruby. So I share that as obviously dogs are important to me. And I just recently got a new puppy. And because I'm in business, for myself, I'm given the luxury of being able to hang out with this puppy all day, which is good because she's a French bulldog. She's tiny, and I think she's just just getting into the potty training. Got a small bladder, not really like picking up on it super fast compared to maybe some of the other dogs. Not true, actually. My Doberman was also a wreck getting that dog uh, house trained. Anyway, so I have this option you know, for me or for you, if you get this new puppy of, hey, I want to be able to spend as much time with this dog as possible. So I can either bring it to work with me all day if I have that option, you know, and, and that way I'm super busy or, or I'm just speaking in context of like, hey, it's a season of super busy. Maybe you just started your business or you're a year or two in it, or it's like just a scale season or whatever. Boom. I want to be able to spend time with the dog, but how can I maximize my work so that I'm being able to give attention to both. And then the same token, the other kind of like option when you're in business for yourself, maybe it's a season where you can spend more time with that dog, where you don't have to spend a ton of time in your business. All right. But let's say you're not a hundred percent removed. You still have to do things in it. How can I then make sure that I can maximize like the most amount of work in the shortest amount of period of time so that the bulk of my day is spent with that dog? That's what I'd love to share with you today. How you can structure your day so that you get the key things done, the big bulk, big mover projects, whatever done as quick as possible. And then if you're in a season where, hey, I can like walk away for the day, you know, maybe it's it's just the way the, the business is set up and, and where you've been structured in the business where you've been able to create it so that you have more time to do the things that you want to do outside of business. Great. You're still doing what needs to be done for the business to grow. Or let's say you're, and actually on the flip side too, it could be because you have no other option. Maybe you have a full-time job, you have a family, and you're getting this business started or the business gets started and slowly getting traction. So you can't spend, you know, all day working on it. You have certain chunks of the day that you can work on it. So you want to maximize that time. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Or 
you know, if you're getting started and yeah, you have a ton of work like in the beginning uh, and especially throughout the years. And, and actually just as you get into business, you're probably going to fall in love with the process. You're going to end up working a lot. Like a lot of entrepreneurs, especially for a long period of time, work a lot, not necessarily because we have to, but because we want to and because we get the opportunity to, but still, even if you are, you know, full time in there, how do I still make sure I'm super productive just in case a fire comes up in work? Uh, it's just a bad day and I'm not really wanting to do anything or just something else pops up. I still get those key things done that I need to do. So this is how I'm going to take a sip of my coffee uh, and then I'll kind of dive into that. So one of the first things uh, or one of the, the biggest things that I started doing uh, within the last couple of years, which was different than when I first started was I actually wrote down everything that I needed to do. So the first thing to do is write down your to-do list for the week. And this can be added to as the week goes on. You can put whatever you want on there. It could be business, could be personal, whatever. But I know for me, if I have an idea come up, if I have something that comes through that I need to do, I boom, I throw it on my to-do list because what I want to make sure I'm not doing is dropping everything and doing it as it comes up. Like as a fire comes up or an urgency that comes up or an idea I want to do, I don't want to drop everything else in order to accomplish that, which... I think a lot of people get stuck in that trap, which is why they realize that, hey, the things they needed to get done weren't getting done because these other things that may be less important, less urgent tasks or whatever, uh, or less like key moving tasks came up and they put their attention to it instead. What I'm trying to do is make sure I put the attention to the things I need to do. So I have my to-do list of all the things that I have to do this week. And I just put it in notes on my phone. What I then also want to keep in mind are what are the two to three things that I need to do on a daily basis to make sure that my business is growing? This could be money later activities or it's going to be like money later activities as well as money now activities. Those money now activities depend on where you are in this business. And also for some other contacts, like let's say you're a gym owner, you just started a gym and you're coaching or now maybe you're doing the sales. You still have to focus on growing the business. So eventually you can get out of it and work on it, not necessarily in it. So you might have to have this to-do list where boom, you go and attack those key areas that are going to grow the business and not, it's not, Hey, I got to make sure I coach these sessions that is on your to-do list or, Hey, I got to make sure that I'm, uh, you know, having these sales appointments. Yes, that is on your to-do list, but maybe those aren't those key things that are going to propel the business forward. So what are those two to three activities that are going to make sure that this business continues to get attention, continues to get market share and continues to grow? So what are activities that are going to do that now as well as later? Also could be like, what are these big projects I'm working on? And if I break these big projects down, then, you know, what do I uh, have to do on a daily basis in order to accomplish them? On a previous podcast, I talked about having your 12 week plan. So you need to have that vision for the year, next couple of years and stuff like that. And other things you have to do. But in 12 weeks, you're only really focusing on a couple big projects, big goals to accomplish you to that end goal. So I don't have to have a million things working on it. Let's say I'm refining my sales process. You know, what are those key areas that you identify that need to be changed, improved, whatever in your sales process? And then on a daily basis, how are you making sure you're getting that done? And it also could be just for, for something else. Anyway, obviously, as you heard me stutter, um, I don't want to stick too much on that and get stuck down a uh, story. So as you can tell, while listening or watching this podcast, one of the reasons I think this is extremely important is for me, I have ADD pretty bad. And I think ADD is actually a blessing in that an ADD allows you to focus on the things that truly interest you excite you, inspire you, whatever. All right. And then I know for me, and maybe this isn't the ADD, maybe this is just something else. I don't even know. Once I get excited, interested in something, I want to know everything about it. And then I want to become the best at it. So then I put a lot of attention to it. So my ADD might take me all over the place, but then when it is something, I will easily just dive in and then get going. So this will then, by having this kind of structure of, hey, what is my to-do list for the whole week? Now, what are the two to three things that I have to do before from like easily get sucked down the rabbit hole of other things? Because for me, I can easily just 
keep going all day and working on something 12, 16, 20 hours a day, but I don't necessarily want to, especially all the time. And then also I could be working on something that is going to be relatively important, but not the biggest thing that I need to work on. So by having this two or three things, what are the things I have to do just about every single day? Are there certain activities that you need to do that if the day was going to get away from you, the day was going to, like a big fire was going to come up. If you were to consider the day a success, what would have had to have happened for that day to be a win? So for instance, is it, hey, I need to read something business-wise because I need to make sure that I'm, I'm allowing myself to mentally grow and maybe it sets you, you set yourself up in a state of success for the day. So I need to read All right, for 30 minutes a morning, an hour morning, whatever it is. Then I need to make sure I send an email out to my list. So if I'm sending an email out to my list, maybe it's current customers, maybe it's uh, just leads or whatever who haven't converted, I'm going to send them out the email. So it's like, hey, if I do just those two things, and if I were to do those every day, then I know even if I got nothing else done, I know that if I wanted to do that and then go spend all the time with my puppy, the business would grow based off of those actions. All right. That's what I kind of want to say, hey, I know I have all these other things to do, but if none of that other stuff got done, but these things did, the day is still going to move forward. And so you have to identify those kind of key moving pieces or those key pieces of your business to make sure that it moves forward. And I think this is where people get stuck because this is, I, I didn't have these at all times, especially in the beginning when I first started. And that'll be, I actually want to talk about like the flip side of like what it's like when you are getting started or you're in a season of scale and then what that actually does take and require. And, and there's a reason why not all businesses are successful. There's a reason why not everyone is cut out for entrepreneurship. I think everybody can, but like you have to understand this aspect. And if you're not willing to do that, then you're not cut out for it. But that's going to be another day <clears throat> at this time is, hey, I just need to do these, these few things. And then if I'm able to work on everything else on my to-do list, fantastic. I'm going to get even more done. One of the things about this though is it helps us control our day. So we have our to-do list, we have our key things. And then the, the third thing you need to do. So one is have a whole to-do list of everything you need to do that week. If you, and then two is you have the two, three key things you need to do every single day in order for the day to be a win. And then the third thing is to make sure that you know what you don't do. Because if you go into those areas of don't do, then you don't get your key areas done or you don't get them done as fast or as quick. Uh, and the day's easy to get away. For a lot of people, this could be opening up their email. You know, once they open up their email, it can easily go down a rabbit hole or it could be going on a social media or whatever, scrolling, getting sucked into freaking TikTok. Next thing you know, two hours go by and you're like, shit, I didn't even get the email sent out and now I have a meeting and I have these other projects or I got to go to work or, you know, oh, my, my kid is actually sick today. So I'm actually, <clears throat> I, I, I'm going to be spending time with my kiddo or uh, my puppy is pooping and needs to run around. So I need to go do all that stuff. Like, crap, the day got away. I didn't get what I needed to get done. So we don't want to do those things. So we don't want to, you know, it, until we get our key areas done, we don't want to go into those other areas. That's really the, the three steps to having the most productive day possible. Me personally, I prefer to have these things done relatively early. You don't have to wake up early to do this. You just have to have the structure done. And maybe it's also, you know, I can't really... I don't have experience doing this uh, necessarily. So I can't say, hey, like then you do it after work or whatever. I'm very productive in the mornings. I used to be very productive at night, but I would also work in the mornings or when I woke up, um, whatever time that would be. Now it's, I like to wake up early. Don't have to, but I like to wake up early because when I have that stretch of time before like the rest of the world wakes up, I don't have any distractions. And I'm somebody that is relatively introverted, but also who likes to like, have everything quiet and just get into the zone and this allows that to happen. What's up, pup? So that's what I like to do at that time. But also if you're thinking about it, you, you have to do this because you have a nine to five. Great. You wake up early, then you get those things done. Then you can go to work and boom, you just banged out a ton of work. It's amazing when you don't have any other distractions, how much you can actually do. So 
those are those three things. One, make sure you have just everything. And it sounds so simple. Uh, just everything written down that are your big to do's. And you might even get to the point where, especially if you've been in business for a long time, or like see your businesses have been, have just grown and stuff like that. You also should include like personal stuff so that you make sure that you're not just doing business, but boom, to do. What are those two to three things that I have to do in order to get closer to my goals? You know, the goal of the season uh, or the, the period of time or whatever. And then what don't or what I what can't I do? So know what's off limits until I get my to do list done, my key areas done. Knowing that is how you can be extremely productive with less time. It's how you can get shit done. It's understanding the priorities so then you can give your attention to them, get those big things done. And then that's all of a sudden, eventually people start going to like, how do you get so much done? You just know what to focus on. You know what you need to give your attention to. And then you actually do those things. It's not revolutionary. It's just making sure it happens. And the other thing is there's going to be days where you don't want to do anything. You're in a shitty mood. You didn't sleep well. You know, you have obligations maybe you don't want to do, but you still have to get your shit done. So having this system in place for yourself so that you do it when you don't want to do it is one of the best things that you can do in your entrepreneurial journey. Essentially, that's falling in love with the process and that's doing the process when you don't want to do it. The trick to how people get absolutely shredded isn't anything fancy or crazy. It's they do the things that they need to do when they don't want to do them. And that's the same thing when it comes to business. Now, how do you make that happen? You understand what those priority items that you need to do every single day. You make sure you get them done before you get distracted anywhere else. That's it. You do that and you're going to be amazed at what you're able to accomplish. Whether it's you have all the time or none of the time. So really hope that today was beneficial for you. If you did get some value out of it, what I would love to know is what exactly resonated with you. Shoot me a DM. I am Bob Thompson on Instagram. And if you think somebody else can get some value out of this, please share it. That's why I do this. I just want to share what I think has been beneficial for me, what I think can be beneficial for you, and then just help you for free, period. So if you could do those two things, really appreciate it. Otherwise, Catch you next time. Hey, thanks for spending your time with me today. I made this show to help people just like you overcome the challenges and adversity that come with entrepreneurship. So if you know someone that could truly benefit from today's show, please be sure to share this episode with them. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week on Unleashing Greatness.